Vitamin D supplementation is all the rage these days. It's connected to things like depression, it's connected to diabetes, it's connected to heart disease, but disconnected actually mean low levels cause those conditions? And the answer is, well, it depends. Does vitamin D supplementation improve type 2 diabetes and blood sugar control? That's exactly what we're going to talk about in this video. One meta-analysis showed an association between vitamin D deficiency and diabetes and poor blood sugar control. But does association necessarily mean that it causes it? This is a case where correlation is not causation. Because in another study, diabetics supplemented with vitamin D levels, and at the end of the study, what they found is that vitamin D levels normalized and blood sugar stayed bad. So vitamin D supplementation kept blood sugar unchanged. It was still just as bad as in the beginning of the study. So it tells us that vitamin D is correlated, but it's not the cause of diabetes. Because if it was causal, supplementation would decrease blood sugar levels or any kind of marker of health, but it didn't. Essentially, vitamin D levels are kind of what they call an acute phase reactant. It is a warning signal, but it's not a cause of diabetes in and of itself. For example, when you're driving your car and your warning light comes on, what do you do? Do you fix what it's telling you to fix? Or do you take out the light, which masks the problem? You don't see the light anymore, so there's no problem, right? That's called the ostrich strategy to health improvement. You just stick your head in the sand and pretend the problem doesn't exist. You correct the problem, which is diabetes, but you don't correct it via vitamin D supplementation. You, you, you correct it via more movement, uh, certain supplements, not vitamin D by the way, and of course the right diet, which I talk about in my book, uh, Type 2 Diabetes Reversal Secrets. Why might low vitamin D levels not be the actual problem, but correlated to the real problem, and we should just leave it alone without supplementing and work on the real problem at hand, and simultaneously it'll, it'll go up. So here are a few reasons why low vitamin D may not be the original problem in and of itself. One study, they found that vitamin D levels were low when inflammation was high. So what do we do? Do we supplement with vitamin D and keep the inflammation high, or do we reduce the inflammation and, lower, and increase vitamin D simultaneously? Of course, we do the latter. Now, in another study, they found that obesity in and of itself uh, decreases vitamin D levels. And so when obese people lose weight, their vitamin D levels increase without vitamin D supplementation. So is vitamin D a warning signal or is it a cause? In this case, it's a warning signal. And yet a third study found that just being sedentary decreased vitamin D levels. So here is a very interesting study where what researchers did is they measured the vitamin D levels before an exercise session, immediately after an exercise session, and 24 hours after an exercise session. And here's what they found. The baseline levels of vitamin D before exercise were 69 nanomoles per liter. Then they had these participants cycle on, on a cycle ergometer on a bicycle for 30 minutes at an intensity of 70%. And then right after the exercise session, their vitamin D levels went from 69 to 89 nanomoles per liter, and 24, 24 hours later, the vitamin D levels were 75 nanomoles per liter. So how interesting that just 30 minutes of cycling affected their vitamin D levels that much. So what do we do with sedentary people? Do we give them vitamin D levels to make their blood levels go up, or do we get them moving? Of course, we get them moving, and simultaneously, vitamin D levels increase. And this is why low vitamin D levels may not be the problem that we think they are. They are a nice warning signal, but, do we, but supplementing with vitamin D without looking for the reasons for this low vitamin D is kind of like taking out the warning light in your car. And so if your vitamin D levels are low in your blood tests, definitely supplement with it. If you don't know, don't supplement. And if they are normal, don't supplement either. Only supplement with vitamin D when it's low. Supplementation is only beneficial to take you from deficient to sufficient but sufficient to excessive is not beneficial either. My name is Igor. If you like this video, click like and subscribe.